Last time on Total Drama The Top 100, the biggest shakeup in the series so far happened with each team having to send two members from their team and get two members from another team. Also, Scheming Flies officially disbanded due to their members not wanting to stay on the team. How will the dynamics change? Keep watching to find out. Chet goes to Rock and says that it's awesome to see him. Rock says that it's awesome to see him as well. Say hi to B, he was one of his friends on the Silent Crickets. B gives his finger gun and Chet says that he's so cool and mysterious. Scarlet goes to Dave and asks if he wants to join an alliance and Dave asks if this alliance would avoid blowing up the island and Scarlet says that that version of her is gone for good. She's here to win by real means. Dave asks who she wants to get out and Scarlet says that she wants a Mike out. Dave asks why Mike and Scarlet says that Mike is a previous winner and with all of his personalities it's unlikely they would have another chance if the opportunity presented itself. Bridget, Bowie, and Mike are all sitting together trying to plan things out when Bridget asks if Bowie is okay. Bowie says that he's as cool as a cucumber and Mike says that he's sweating though. Bowie in Confessional says that he doesn't know what to do, he really wants Bridget gone, but to betray an alliance with Scarlet would be suicide. Ripper is venting to Sanders about how much he hates his life outside of here, and Sanders says that he just hasn't found his crowd yet. She wasn't that good at anything before she got into the police academy, that's where she found her true talent. Give it time, it'll blossom. Ripper in Confessional says that he isn't sure if Sanders is being genuine or just trying to have him let his guard down, but he feels safe around her. Dwayne asks Damien how he's been, he hasn't spoken to him for a while. Damien says that he has been good, but he has to run, Firewood won't deliver itself. Dwayne in Confessional says that he doesn't get it, Damien has been really distant lately, he hopes he's not mad at him. Dawn appears suddenly scaring Dwayne as Dawn says that Damien is trying to come to terms with the reality of this game. Dwayne asks what she means and Dawn says that Damien isn't ready for you to be voted off. Dwayne asks why he would be the one voted off and Dawn says that she's just giving his reasoning, not a reading of fate. Lori says that it makes sense people run away from him with his meat breath and Dawn says that she holds bigger skeletons in her closet than even Heather. Lori in confessional says that she doesn't like the creepy psychic chick. Cody asks Harold how he's been, it's nice to see a familiar face. Harold says that it's nice to see him as well, only a few more swaps and they can get the Total Drama Brothers back together. Sierra says that that would be a horrible idea as they imploded last time they did that. Mary asks Anwi and Ella how they would feel about an alliance and Ella says that she'd love to join together in an alliance and Anwi says that he will join as long as they can get the number advantage. Sadie is talking to Amy when Amy asks if she ever shuts up and before Sadie can answer Heather comes over and asks how the new girls are doing. Amy says that she's fine but Sadie asks what she wants. Amy asks why Sadie had so much disdain in her voice and Sadie asks if she really doesn't know about Heather. Amy asks if she's mean and Sadie says that she's the worst, evil to the core. Amy says that she'd be happy to get into an alliance if that was what this was about. Heather in Confessional says that restocking her alliance may be easier than one slot. Carrie asks Mickey how he's holding up and Mickey says that he's honestly doing better than he thought. Axel has been really helping him. Axel comes over and asks who he's talking to and Mickey says that they are his friends. Axel says that she is his friend. They are strangers to him. Devin says that they aren't strangers, they competed in the same season. Axel looks Devin up and down before saying that he wouldn't last 5 minutes in the apocalypse before dragging Mickey away. Carrying Confessional says that Mickey deserves way better than that, psycho. Emma asks Beth how her dating life is going and Beth says that things have been pretty quiet lately, she has been enjoying her time alone. Emma asks what she should do to get Chase into her and Beth says that he obviously still likes her and Emma says that she was kind of mean to Chase so she's not sure. Spud chimes in and says that whenever someone makes him mad, food calms him down real quick. Emma says that Chase isn't obese, and Spud says that he doesn't have any ideas then. Lightning asks if they can bring Jen into the alliance, and Tober says that could work, but she's also tied to Blamely. They'd have to swoon them both, and Lightning, you're well... Lightning says, I'm what? Topher says, never mind. Lightning says that's what he thought. How about Sky? Topher says that May actually works, and she's very clearly on the outs. Lightning asks how he could possibly know that, since he just showed up to the team, and in confessional, Topher says that he stole a phone from an intern. He's been watching every episode of the show. Like he said, he's here to win this time. Lightning says that they only have three members, though. They need four to tie, and Topher says that he has an idea, but he may not like it. Lightning immediately says, no, 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 I am saying no to Joe. Topher asks why, and Lightning says that she's a witch. Topher points out that if they want Scott out, they need to do this. Lightning says fine begrudgingly. Topher tells Lightning to get Sky. Lightning in Confessional says that teaming up with Joe is like going for it on 4th and 10 on your own 1 yard line. It's suicide. Lightning goes to Sky and says that she may be on the bench but he wants to help her get into play. 
Sky asks why he would help her, and Lightning says that he likes how strong she is, she's better than Scott at least. Sky says that she's been waiting for someone smart to show up here who could identify that Scott is a liar. Lightning says that he sure is. He's the biggest liar there ever was. Lightning and Confessional says that he didn't listen to a word she said, but it helped her sign the contract, and that's all that matters. Sha yeah! Junior asks Scott what he's doing, and Scott says he's creating some fake idols for the others to grab. It would be good to have them find these, and then they won't bother trying to find another one. Junior says that's genius, and Scott says that it's just a little something he came up on his first venture. Blaine goes to Scott and tells him that she wants to strike a deal with him. Scott asks what kind of deal, and Blaine says that she just wants security is all for if they are gonna swap members again. If it comes down to it, she wants Jen gone before her. Scott says that that's an easy wish, and Junior asks why she would do that, aren't they friends? Blaine says yeah, but sometimes you need to make hard decisions to keep yourself safe. She can get the ratings in another show. She's young. Tofford tells Joe that he has an offer she can't refuse, a once in a lifetime deal to join the side of himself, Lightning and Sky, and she could be one of the many cogs that power this machine. Joe says that if she's gonna join, she wants to run it, and Topher says that with all due respect, they're giving her the invitation, she's in no position to barter. Joe slams Topher against a tree and says that he has a lot of gall to show up here and act like he's in charge. She's in charge, got it? Topher says yeah, of course. In confessional, Topher says that that could've went better. Chase goes to Z and says that it's great to see him, and Z says he missed both him and Priya. Priya says it's nice to see him as well. Taylor says that this is so unfair, she had everything back on her old team. They better find a seal of approval or she will quit. Lorenzo says that it's not so bad. She could spend some time with him if she'd want. Taylor says you, not in his dreams, and Tom says that with a makeover, he's sure Taylor would change her mind. Ezekiel says to listen up, he's the leader, eh? And as a result, they have to listen to him. The first rule about the team is to have as much fun as possible because it seems to keep them away from eliminations. Leonard says that good attitudes bring great fortune upon us all. Priya asks if that's really Gwen and Ezekiel, and Z says that he thinks so. Priya goes to Gwen and says that she's a huge fan, and Gwen says I'm honored, I guess. Ezekiel says not to forget him, eh? And Priya says she never could forget the first boot. Ezekiel says that he's here to win this time. And Priya says that it shows he didn't get out first this time. He really showed up with his A-game. Chase asks if he really got eliminated first twice, and Ezekiel says that it was rigged against him, eh? Once Caleb arrives, he offers to take Zoe's bag and she becomes flustered and thanks him. Duncan says that he's glad there's a valet, here's his bag, he throws it to Caleb and Caleb says that he's just glad to help. Eva and Katie are infatuated over Caleb and MacArthur asks what she's missing, he's not hot, he hasn't even eaten a pot of pork and beans yet. Julia asks Crimson how she's doing and Crimson says that she can show her true self here. Julia says that she's glad she can drop the nice girl shtick she's been putting up for others around her. How about an alliance? Crimson says that alliances with her don't go well but she will join it as long as Sam can be in it. Julia says that honestly she was going to try and get Sam but that makes it all the more easier. Sam is with Jay and Sam is teaching him how to play. He apologizes for giving him such a tough one for his first time and Jay says that in a weird way it's kind of cathartic. The fast paced nature, flashing lights and high amounts of germs on the controller broke his body so much that he could play it freely. Sam says he's not sure what that means but it sounds like him after an 18 hour grinding session. Alejandro goes to Noah and tells him that he knows that they don't like each other but if they want to win they have to stick together. Noah says that he doesn't really have have a choice in the matter. He lost his team to a blind side, so he's short of allies right now. Alejandro says not to worry, he will protect him from a vote if they go to elimination. Anne Maria is doing her makeup with Kelly, and she says that Kelly should look into spray tans, they can make you look 20 years younger. Kelly asks if that's true, and Anne Maria says it's backed by science, right, Michelle? Michelle says she doesn't know anything about being orange, and Anne Maria asks if Elodie knows anything about it, and Elodie says that too much sun tanning can result in cancer, and Anne Maria says she didn't want a medical examination. She she just wanted her take on it. Sammy for sure doesn't know anything about it. Sammy chimes in and says that she does actually. Amy one time sprayed her whole body with it, including hair, to tell us a part easier. Anne Maria says that she should meet with this Amy chick. She has good taste. What about Jeff though? What a dweeb, am I right? Volunteer if you think you could fit the challenge. What a tool. Sammy says that she likes that he listens to the team, and Anne Maria says that's because she's too anxious to volunteer. She likes to know that nobody will hate her for doing so. Millie goes to Alejandro and tells him that it's great Eva is no longer here to disturb them, and Alejandro says it sure is something. 
Millie adds on to her sentence and says that it's like they're a couple the way they go everywhere together. Alejandro says he needs to get something, and Millie says that she will go with him, and Alejandro says that he would rather do this alone. Millie in confessional asks if she was too pushy. Jack tells Alejandro that he can scream here if he wants, he's suffering a curse like none other, pretending to favor the hog for a vote it requires a Herculean will. Miles asks if they should recruit Scary Girl, and Kitty says that she likes her body parts where they are at, thank you. Emma chimes in saying that she agrees with Kitty, Dakota asks what the alternative is, and Kitty says they can get Ryan. They talked a lot during the redonkulous race. Dakota says that adding a guy into their girls alliance kinda breaks the spirit of this, doesn't it? Emma says to give it a shot, if he says anything out of line, we will whip him into shape. Justin says that they need to get one of the new people, and Brick says that they should avoid Scary Girl, her name is enough of a deterrent. Brody says that honestly he agrees, he loves risk taking, but this might be too much. Wayne says that she's in his season and she trained to be normal and stuff. Justin says that's great, then he can be the sacrifice. Wayne says wait what? I didn't want to do that. Brick salutes him saying he will miss his fine soldier. Brody says that he has to do it, otherwise bro time is over, and then who will he hang out with? Emma while doing taxes? Wayne says anything but that before going to Scary Girl and asking how she's been. Scary Girl says that she's surprised he's approaching her. They must want her in the alliance. Wayne says you betcha, how about it? Ryan says that's a terrible idea, just wait till you have to lock yourself in the freezer to escape her. Scary Girl says that if she stabs in this part of his stomach, he will bleed out in 5 minutes. Ryan says that he will definitely be joining the girls. Wayne's two brain cells rub together as he realizes that Ryan is on the girls team and Wayne says that he needs her to join them and Scary Girl says okay, but only because Ryan's on the other side. Jerry and Pete make fun of each other as they meet again and Izzy says it's like her grandma's nursing home in here. Rodney says that he misses his old team and Stephanie punches him, telling him to stop being such a baby. DJ tells her to cool it, they're a team now, let's start acting like one. Rodney asks if that's Sean, and Sean says, darn it, not this guy. Rodney says that he's missed his team, he's happy that he's okay, and Sean says that he's happy to see him as well. Trent asks who he is, and Sean says that this is Rodney, he was in my season and he fell in love with every girl he met. Rodney says that he found his true love, he promises. She's the most beautiful girl on the island and her name is... Lindsay, Tyler yells as he goes to his girlfriend and gets a warm embrace with her. Tyler asks how she's been and Lindsay says she's been doing horrible without him. Like she had to spend time with Noah. Tyler says it must have been torture, he's sorry she had to deal with that. Sean walks away and Trent asks what's wrong. Sean says that he just misses his girlfriend is all. And Trent says he can use this as motivation to get further. Don't be jealous of them, be happy that they don't have to experience the pain you are going through. Tron says that he doesn't get it, it was his fault she left. If he wasn't searching for food that day, she would never have saw him and the team wouldn't have known that. Trent stops him and says that they don't even know why she got eliminated, they can't just assume that it was his fault. Sean thanks him before apologizing for being so weak and Trent says that he's been in way lower places than him. Nine times lower, he'd reckon. Chris welcomes the teams to their challenge. Today, teams will compete in pairs and elect one member from their team to compete. This means that tonight is a double elimination. However, one team will be left out, and so they will place two members from their own team. Today's pairs will have to go through Chef's Boot Camp. First pair to drop out loses. First teams paired up are the Flaming Cockroaches and Ravenous Spiders. Bowie says in confessional that this is great, they can definitely lose this, he just hopes the Ravenous Spiders aren't trying to win. Scott in confessional says that this is going to go great as long as those goody two-shoes over at the Flaming Cockroaches don't try too hard to win. Bowie says that Dave should do it and when Dave asks why him, Scarlet says that he's light so he won't run out of energy as fast as Chet. Chet says that's offensive but it's true, he can't run for long. Scott is about to volunteer Junior, but Sky says she will go. Amber Scorpions and Silent Crickets are a team. Harold says he has mad skills and has improved since his last outing here. Tyler says that he will win this for Lindsay, and Lindsay says in confessional that Taylor is so sweet. Drowning Mosquitoes and Tenacious Earwigs. Eva says she will go unless someone has a problem with that, and Jeff asks his team if they think they can handle this, but Sammy says that she's going and that's final. Jeff says that she likes when Sammy gets into it like that. Knock them dead, tiger. Sammy then asks what she signed up for, and Noah says that she just signed up for Chef's Boot Camp. Pro tip, don't puke. Sammy says in confessional that she can't believe it's a boot camp. What happened to rock climbing or cooking? Hopping sink bugs and excited ants. Brick says that he can do this, he was in boot camp after all. Emma says that she hates to admit it, but the boys do have the edge in that regard. Miles says to just wait for when the plant identification challenge comes up, we'll destroy those boys. Kitty says that she thinks that's just Miles. 
Priya says that she will go as a form of initiation to prove her worth. Leonard cheers her on, telling her to go for the gold and whatever treasures you may find. That means mediocre mealworms, you get to have two. Axel says she will do it and Mickey will as well. Mickey asks what she means and Axel says that he needs to get tougher through exposure to tough fights. Mickey says that this will kill him. Axel says that that's quitter talk, and Devin says she may want to let him sit at this one out. Axel kicks Devin and says that if anyone has anything else to say, they can talk to her boot. Heather in confessional says that she thought Axel was just traditional crazy, not Izzy crazy. Chef has them pick up the canoe, and Sammy says that this is torture, and Eva says that she volunteered for it. Stop complaining. Priya asks if Brick if Scott was really that bad to be around, and Brick tells her to please stop asking him questions when he's trying to concentrate. Sky tells Dave that she needs his help. Dave asks why he should help, and Sky says that they are friends, remember? Dave says that with all due respect, he tried to kill Sky. They are not friends. Sky says that's water under the bridge now. Did he find anything or not? Dave says that they can't talk about this right now, he's about to die. Harold says that he has the spirits of ancient samurai in him. As a result, he could stay in this position for weeks. Tyler says that's impressive, he can only do this for a few hours at most. Axel asks if Mickey heard that, they are pathetic compared to them. Mickey is groaning in agony. After 12 hours, Sammy lets go and so they are allowed to go to the next part. Before Eva leaves though, she tells Sammy not to volunteer if she can't back it up. Chef tells the teams to write a 500 word essay about how much they love Chef Hatchet. Brick and Priya are writing with all their might while Tyler has fallen asleep and Axel writes the essay for Mickey as he notices he's fallen asleep as well. Chef tells him that Tyler is out and he leaves to go to bed. Teams are then tasked with going through an obstacle course and Sky asks Dave if now is a good time and Dave says that now is a terrible time as he wimps out due to the mud. Axel says that he's pathetic, right Mickey? Axel looks back and sees Mickey is face first in the mud and Axel goes back and asks him if he's okay and Mickey says that it's okay, the fairies will take him and Axel quickly asks for a doctor. Chef tells Axel to move now otherwise she will be eliminated. Axel begrudgingly goes through the course again. In confessional, Axel says that she didn't want to leave him but it's kill or be killed out there. Rick collapses and Chef tells him he's done. Harold in confessional says he's kind of carrying the teams on his back right now. He's like a hero or something. The final challenge is about to begin, but Scott goes to Axel and he tells her to kick her off. And Axel says that if she gives her a reason, she will definitely kick her off. The challenge begins where they must hang upside down and Harold says he can't hold on for much longer after an hour. Priya asks what happened to Mickey and Axel says that she wasn't there to protect him. She pushed him too far. He collapsed. Eva says that that's obvious. You can't fix that guy. Sky says that she thinks Eva's right. You probably aren't the type of person Mickey needs. I mean, poor thing. He shouldn't be here where it's so dangerous. Axel says that he can survive well on his own with a bit of training, and Sky says that the kid has medical issues. She can't survival training him out of that. Axel tells her to shut it. Sky says that it's really irresponsible for her to take his health into her hands, and Axel says that he told her to shut it before kicking her, causing Sky to fall. Sky asks what that was for, and Axel says that was for not shutting it. Chris then says that flaming cockroaches and ravenous spiders will go to elimination. Before the elimination, Scarlet asks Bowie if they're clear on voting out Mike, and Bowie says yeah. Bridget goes to Bowie when he's alone and asks if they're good with voting out Ripper, and he says yes. Bowie in confessional says that he doesn't know what to choose. Mike has to be gone to prove he's loyal, but he likes Mike. Sky goes to Dave and begs him to give him something if he has something to give. She's in danger tonight, and Dave asks what she will do for it. Sky says she will do anything. Dave asks anything? Sky pauses for a second before saying, yes, I'll even be her boyfriend. Dave says that he's disappointed at her. Sky asks what he means, and Dave says that he heard her tell Ezekiel that she had a boyfriend already. Sky says, what, you believed me? I was just trying to get away from Zeke. Dave tells Sky that he doesn't want to date her, but he will give her this because it will make amends for what he did. Dave gives Sky an immunity idol, and Sky burps in Dave's face. Dave says that he doesn't know how to take that. He just hopes he isn't the one being sent home tonight for that. At elimination, Chris says that out of all the teams brawn, they fell short. Flaming Cockroaches, you're first. Chef, any ideas of who should be sent home? Chef says that honestly, Dave is the only big one. Dave says in confessional that Chef's big mouth might have gotten him eliminated. If you get a marshmallow, you are safe. Bridget, Scarlet, Sanders, Bowie, Chet, B, Rock, Dave, and finally, Ripper. Ripper in confessional says that even he wasn't aware Mike was going home. Mike says that that's a shame, but he already won once, he doesn't have to win again to be happy. Bridget asks Bowie how that happened, and Bowie says that they must have gotten enough votes somehow. Bridget asks who, and Bowie says that it could be B. Rock says that he did get the idea of voting off Mike from B, so he could have done that. 
B points at Scarlet, and Scarlet says that this is a standard case of deflection. He's trying to fool you, Bridget. Don't listen to them. We're loyal to the cause. Sanders says in confessional that she flipped. She couldn't vote Ripper off. Oh, she hates to go against what her group wants, but what could she do? Oh, she knows she will go and bring Ripper into it. Chris tells them to hush it. It's time for ravenous spiders. Chef, anything new to add? Chef says that Sky needs to keep her mouth shut, and Scott, you're probably a target as well. Sky asks why him, and Chef says that that's just how things seem to be this season. Alright, marshmallows go to Junior, Jen, Blainley, Joe, Lightning, Topher, and finally, neither of you. It's a tie. Sky tells him to wait before playing out an idol, and Chris asks for a seal of approval, and Scott says that she fell for one of his knockoffs. Joe rolls her eyes and says that searching for an idol is out of the question. Sky says that doesn't matter, she'll just beat him in a tiebreaker. She can outlast him in any endurance challenge. Junior says that he's sorry, Sky, but he needs Sky here, and he pulls out an idol and says that he will use it on Sky. Joe is shocked and says that that was a good play, little man, and Sky says that this can't be. Sky tells her to believe it, she lost. Sky says, you know what? At least I won a season and was liked by others, unlike you who will die alone. Sky says that that was harsh as Sky goes on the boat of losers. Chris tells them that two more have bit the dust, and an idol has been played. They are safe tonight, but tomorrow they may not be that lucky. Shep says that the magus can go to sleep now. The votes are as follows for flaming cockroaches. Bridget voted Ripper due to not liking his behavior. Mike voted Ripper because it was what Bridget was doing. Scarlet voted Mike due to viewing him as a threat. Sanders voted Dave because she couldn't bring herself to vote Ripper. Ripper voted Dave because he failed the challenge for them. Bowie voted Mike to prove he was loyal to Scarlet. Chet voted Mike due to B's suggestion. Dave voted Ripper because he was the most annoying person on the team. B voted Mike due to Scarlet's suggestion. And Rock voted Mike due to B's suggestion. The votes are as follows for Ravenous Spiders. Scott voted Sky due to disliking her. Sky voted Scott due to disliking him. Junior voted Sky due to liking Scott more. Jen voted Sky due to being in Scott's alliance. Blainly voted Sky due to being in Scott's alliance. Joe voted Scott to get rid of the biggest threat. Laning voted Scott due to disliking him. Topher voted Scott to put his team in power. And that's that for Total Drama The Top 100 Episode 12. What did you think? Question of the week. Do you think Bowie is making the right choice teaming up with Scarlet? Why or why not? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you all next time on Total Drama The Top 100.